Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to hold a channel value on Edge TX with the flip of a switch. Normally I don't take video requests, but I had a question in comments for a video I recently posted by Scimitar Nut, and his question was simple. He said, hey, if I'm running a gas plane, I like sometimes to be able to flip a switch on a radio and have it hold my throttle position. How do I do that on Edge TX? And I have to admit it stumped me for a little bit. In fact, it stumped me enough where I had to use a lifeline and I reached out to one of the developers to help get me over the finish line. So I wanna give a shout out to Raphael and say thanks for helping me out, man, I appreciate you. And it really was an interesting question because I was about 95% there and I just couldn't figure out the last little bit. Let me show you what's gonna happen. And I'll also point out that while I don't fly gas or nitro planes, so I don't really understand the value of this myself, the question was asked and I wanted to answer it with the logic. And you could use this for other things on an airplane. You could do it to hold the throttle for some purpose. If you were doing a long climb out in the middle of a flight, you could flip a switch and have the elevator come down to the current value rather than some fixed value. So there are some ideas I had on how you might be able to use this, but let me show you how it works. I'm gonna start by pressing the model button and then pressing it again to bring up the channel monitor. And I set my example up on the throttle stick because that's the question I was asked. So as I move my throttle from the bottom to the top, you can see I've got the full range of motion on my output and my mix line, right? So there it goes, full range of motion. And I did a tricky little thing and I used a toggle switch or a momentary switch to lock the throttle. So let's just say, for example, as I'm climbing out, I want my throttle locked at 57%. All I have to do is hit the T6 button, and as I do that, now when I move the stick, no throttle movement. Pretty cool, right? And if I hit T6 down again, I get my throttle back. So real simple way to lock the throttle and then unlock it with the flip of a switch. Let me show you how this configuration works. We'll back out of the channel monitor and we're gonna start with flight modes. Go into flight mode zero and then click on setup and you wanna disable T6, that's the switch I'm using. If you wanna use T5, that's fine, but disable T6. And when it's disabled, it'll look like this with the highlight off and no dropdown list. When it's enabled, you'll see a dropdown list on the side. So turn it off. And the reason we do that is because if we're constantly moving the switch up and down, we don't want it to tell us that we reach the end of our trim. I will point out, you could use any switch you want. I like this one because it's a momentary and I can lock and unlock by pressing down on the switch. I just thought it was a clever way to do it. So we'll exit out of that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is go into the logical switch setup. We'll do that by clicking this icon and then we'll click on this logical switch and I'll show you what I've defined here. In the logical switch setup, I'm using the function sticky and I'm using for V1 and V2, 6D. And all this means is when I press 6D, L1 goes on. And when I press 6D again, L1 goes off, that's it. It's just like a latching momentary switch. The next thing we'll do is create a special function to take advantage of that logical switch. On my radio, I use special function number five. You can use any special function you want. The number doesn't matter. And in this special function, I'll bring the editor up and I'll show you what we did. For the switch, I'm using exclamation L01. And the reason we use the exclamation is because that means when L01 is not lit, we want the special function to be active. And what's gonna happen is well, this function is adjust and I use global variable number three. Again, you can use any global variable you want. I just use number three. For the mode, I have mixer source, and that's a drop down option. You, you choose mixer source. And then for mixer source, we use throttle. That's the thing that's actually going to adjust our global variable. And then finally, click enable. Now, what this does is special function number five is active when L01 is not active. And the reason we do that is because when you first turn the radio on, L01 will be off until you press a button. So we want the initial state. What we want is for the throttle to make adjustments to the global variable. So I'll toggle over to the global variable page and show you what will happen. We first turn the radio on as I move the stick up and down. We have this value on the global variable moving from negative 100 to positive 100. Okay, very simple. Now, if I push T6 down, that means L01 is on and this stick no longer moves that global variable. I'll press six down again, and then I'll move the throttle. So there we go, we have movement. And then wherever I stop, let's just say I stop at negative 16. When I press six down, that stops that global variable from moving. Now let's take a look at the logical switch again, just to make sure you understand what's happening. Logical one is off right now. And because of that, special function number five is active. Remember we're using not logical one. So anytime logical one is not active, special function number five is, which means we make adjustments to the global variable when we move that stick. 
The next thing we need to do is set up some inputs. So I'll go to my throttle input and hit edit. And what I've got in here is a throttle input name of THR. I'm using my source of throttle. I have a weight of 100%. And I'm using that same switch that I used in my logical switch, not L01. That's really important because when L01 is not active, that means this input is active and you'll see movement on the graph all the way up and down. So that's the first input. And then the second input we need to make is this one. And this is the value that had me stuck because normally when you lock a channel value, we use an override in special functions. And unfortunately in edge, there's no way to override a channel using a global variable. And that's where my brain wanted to go because that's what I'm used to doing. Anyway, when I talked to the developers, Raphael, he said, hey, try max on, the, on your source. And when I did that, of course it came together. So for the source, we use max. And for the weight, I'm using global variable three, which I assigned a label of THR. So if you scroll down, you'll see that these are all global variables. I labeled my global variable THR. Let's take a look at that real quick because I don't want to cause any confusion. We'll just go back to the global variable page and there you go. You see, I've got THR for a global variable. You can get to that by clicking edit and just typing in a name right here on the top. But that is global variable number three. All right, let's go back to the input page and we'll finish this one off. So with my global variable of THR set for the weight, the last thing to do is set the switch to be L01. And what, and what this means is when L01 is active, the weight is set to the max value of the global variable. So that becomes the weight. And again, if we hit the model button, you can see that as we move the stick up and down, we have full range of travel. And then if I simply click the T6 button down, it locks that value in and I'm at 100% because that's where I was when I clicked it. If I hit T6 down again, throttle is released and I can move around. One other important thing that I kind of glossed over a little bit, and I want to make sure you guys understand this, is in the special function, the reason we're using not logical one is because we only want that global variable to be updated when logical one is off. So when logical one is on, we stop updating the global variable, and that's what sets the weight in the input line. Well, there you go. Now you guys know how to lock a channel value with a flick of a switch. Push T6 down, move the stick, nothing happens. T6 down again, and we've got full range of motion. Kind of a cool little logic exercise. I'll be curious to see if you guys come up with any uses I didn't think about. I want to say thanks again to Scimitar Nut for suggesting this one. Again, I normally don't take requests, but this one kind of perplexed me a little bit because I thought initially it'd be very simple. I thought you'd simply go into the special functions do a channel override with global variable one and you're done. That would have been the end of it. But when I realized we couldn't use global variables in the override function, that really kind of put a monkey wrench into my thought process and I really wanted to solve this one. So thanks again for the suggestion and thanks to Raphael for the assist. It was a late night assist, so I appreciate your help too, buddy. Thank you very much. I hope you liked my video on how to lock a channel value with a flick of a switch. And I'll remind you, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. A thumbs up would be awfully nice too if you liked the video. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.